design. Universal design for learning, again, is the application of that idea to the curriculum itself, the materials we use in the classroom. Um, in the old days, books were the center of our classrooms. And uh, they're a fabulous technology. And they do certain things. They standardize, they make things permanent, they make them uniform. And those were great things in the 1500s, 1600s, because <laughs> nobody knew. Uh, whether you're telling the same story twice because everybody's memory's faulty and people lie and all sorts of things. So <laughs> books allowed um, us to do some really fabulous things. But compared to new media, which give us those same things but a lot more, the disadvantages of print became more clear that the standardization, the fixedness, the uniformity of print is actually a barrier to doing a good education because it means that just like the analogy, there's an entrance for some kids and no entrance for others. Um, so in a, when we have print as the center of our curriculum, then what we have is a standardized curriculum with standardized entrances and standardized ways of doing things. But what we have is a very diverse student body. And they can't, in fact, use these things in standardized ways. It doesn't work for everybody, just like Matthew. That's Matthew there. Matthew, I should say, is now in college. Um, does everything still with his chin, but he's a college kid, and I don't know how the dating works with just using his chin, but anyway, uh, he, the rest of college goes fine. Um, new media. The key thing about new media is there's a separation between the content and the display device. In printed books, the content is dyed into the book itself. You don't get that separation. The book and the content are the same thing. In new media, the content is separate from the display device. So we have the content which we've stored somewhere. In the, we've stored it on a hard drive, it's out on the web, in the cloud, it's in your refrigerator, could, it's on your car dashboard now. The information is stored in digits in some place and then we show it when we want to. We can put it on our cell phones, it's amazing what's happened. Um, but that ability to separate the content from its display is very powerful in that we can actually then do the universal designs to say, oh, do you like it more like this or more like this? So you've all done this with your computers. You can have it be your style, fabulous. But it also means that we can put out information in very different forms. So it can come out as something you look at, but it can also come out in, as something you touch. It's quick to, to make a digital, if you have a digital information, you can say, well, give it to me visually, but, or also give it to me as something to touch. There are refreshable braille devices now so that people can literally go out on the web and feel the web um, and be able to do it because it's digital and you look at it and other people can feel it. But that power is what we didn't have when we had printed. And we can do a lot more. We can have it come out as something, I'm not going to bother to have this read, but you know everything now, every, uh, all your Macs and your iPads and everything, everything talks text. So I can take this same uh, words and information and I can talk it. So I can look at it, I can touch it, I can listen to it, all from the same exact thing. Give it to me in a digital form and I can get it in lots of ways. In fact, there's new ways coming up every day. This is a, um, what do you call it, an avatar that does American Sign Language. So you put the content in and he signs it for you, ASL. So uh, this is being exploded. Give us a beautiful digital marked up copy and then we can make lots of things from it and everybody can get to it. So back this slide that I skipped over, when I talked at the beginning the first day, virtue of NIMAS or XML is that it takes advantage of that. It says give us the digital version and then we can make it into all these different kinds of things for different kids. Right from the start it's easy to do it and uh, we don't have to have teachers at night scanning books and uh, uh, doing all that uh, extra work. Okay, So that's the idea. Did that take more than four minutes? It did? Oh, all right, I'm not good at the. Okay, but now I'm off the, so that's what universal design is. Only part of the differentiation, because one of the questions was, how will you differentiate from differentiated instruction? One of them is the intentional pre-design, that what we're looking for is how do we design environments which from the get-go are designed to work for everybody. And that's where, as Jeff would say, and we would say too, the digital stuff is so powerful because we can have many different versions of the same thing. Same content, many different versions. And on Jeff's uh, little um, 
slide, the flexible materials. Print is not a flexible material. Print is a fixed, inert material. And there's just a very limited set of things we can do to make sure it works for everybody. And we'll come to talk about that. So, as I began last time, we would like to say that print is just too disabled. And sometimes I say provocatively, print has CP. It's paralyzed. It has a major disability. It cannot move. It can't be changed into other things. It can't be, it's not flexible. It is frozen, rigid, paralyzed. It has a disability. It has a bunch of disabilities, we'll see. But anyway, so you can't meet the challenge of diversity with print. It's just too hard. So here's the guidelines that we're gonna be talking about a bit today. How do we provide options? What kind of options do we provide so that when we start with a digital thing that we can be sure that everybody's going to be able to learn the information that we want them to learn. And I want to just show you a commercial thing to show you these same three things are done outside of school. School is lagging behind. So this is my, G well it's not my GPS anymore, I've got, now I've got a Prius which has a built-in thing, it's fabulous. But uh, when you rent cars, this is Hertz's rental thing, this is their GPS that you get when you rent the car. And it actually does universal design for learning better than school curricula, which really aggravates me. Because it shows that A, you can do it commercially viably. That is, they put it in every car they sell, and it's just, you know, it's there. And the fact that they do better than schools just drives me crazy. But this is, this is four years old when I took this picture. The new ones are even better universally designed. So, it'll do all the things we talk about in the guidelines. It provides options for perception. Not everybody can see. Not everybody can see well. So look at the options. You can change things like how bright it is and stuff. You know, that's nice, but you can't do it with a printed map. You're at night, you can't see the gosh darn thing. Here you can say, make it brighter. Um, it talks to you, just like digital text can. So you don't have to even look at it. And I know this will be a hard image, but you can be blind and driving your car, and it will talk to you. Um, because uh, it has multiple representations for perception. That is, you don't have to see well, you don't have to see at all. Um, it will also, uh, well, I guess some other things. Um, uh, did I get everything? I could switch various views and so on, but I'm gonna go quick. Secondly, we talk about options for language and symbols. And built into this is fabulous. Um, it has text is one of the ways you can look at it. So if you can't hear, you can look at the text. Or it will speak to you, again, one of the things. But fabulous, built into it is, um, I don't know how many languages they have now, but this one had eight languages in it. So I'm sitting there, and how easy it is to say, ah, English isn't your language, what language do you want? And just ask you. So you say German, fabulous. It comes part of the, part of the universal design is to say, we get it, not everybody speaks English. So it's just built in and it talks to you in whatever language you want. And by the way, it's even more subtle than that. My wife's favorite thing is um, that you can ask for it in English English, meaning like uh, what, the King's English or ugly American English or Southern Texas English, whatever. You can ask for, you know, what kind of voice you want. And Ruth likes the guy who's, it's, a, it's an Australian. That's her favorite accent. <laughs> oh, you got it in the back, you want that one. He's great, isn't he? And, and she wants him to say, he, so he says, you know, I can't do the Australian accent because I sound like an American. Good. Oh, are you Australian? Oh, great. Okay. Well, uh, say, um, uh, what's, what's, what? Good day, mate. It sort of talks like that. It's really amazing. <laughs> what Ruth is wanting it to say is, um, I know, you say it. Say, great turn, miss. Great turn, miss. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so uh, it just sounds so much better. What? Recalculating. Yes. <laughs> Recalculating. It's so, it's, see you, you, see, you already tell you'd like to have her talk to you rather than me. Anyway, those are, those are the options uh, that are built in. And my favorite is it's even built for people who have aphasia and who can't, understand language. I mean, the amount of universal design that's in this little cheap little machine is so amazing. But 
Let's say that you, none of the eight languages work for you, or you have aphasia and you can't understand language, and you're blind and you can't see it. You know what it does? <laughs> It has the bong system. And I know some of you are old enough to have mixed <laughs> ideas of what I mean by bong. This is, this is a uh, sound, the bong, OK? And uh, what it does is, and a lot of people who use this don't even know what it's doing, because it's, it's got so many different ways to tell you the right turn. But the bong system is that it goes bong, bong, just two little bongs like that. And that means, if it goes up, it means turn right at the next intersection. If it goes bong, bong, that means turn left at the next intersection. <laughs> and what do you think it does when you're supposed to go straight? It just goes bong, bong. So you can literally you know, shut your eyes, uh, uh, no language, <laughs> and uh, you just keep listening to the bongs and it'll get you there. It's fabulous. So these are multiple representations. It says, OK. Uh, for vision and hearing, we've got multiples. You can hear it, you can listen to it, you can uh, watch it. But there's alternatives for language and symbols. Alternatives for text, alternatives for English, alternatives for language itself, all built in automatically. And the last option is options for cognition. It also is, I mean, again, why don't we have curricula that are this good? And it says, you know what? People are different cognitively in what would help them. And some people like just to know what's the next turn. They don't want to have this whole you know, big map or anything. Just tell me the next turn. So that's what this will do. And it just says next turn and stuff. But it also just shows you the next turn. That's it. Other people find that annoying. What they want to know is, where the heck am I? Give me a map. Give me a grid. And it turns out there's a lot of psychology studies that show that people are different this way. Women tend to be what are called root finders. That is, they like to know landmarks, which is what this is. Turn at the, turn at the uh, gas station is a landmark system. And women, not all women, but more women, like when they ask for directions, go down to the gas station, turn right. When you see the steeple, turn left. Men, more often, not every man, wants to know, basically, you're going northwest, OK? Just keep driving in that direction. Sooner or later, you'll get there, OK? <laughs> and this is um, the grid system. And uh, so you can choose. The nice thing is, on this, it choices. Again, it says, well, which do you want? Do you want next turn kind of thing, landmark description? Or do you want a map? And this thing just is you on the map. And you can always see where you are and guide yourself there. The important thing is it provides these options, cognitive options. There's more actually in it than that. Um, so these are three things that we care about in how do we represent information to kids.